You know the trolley problem. Five people are on a track in front of a runaway train, but you can choose to pull a lever. Diverting the train onto a different track, killing only one person. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In what world is that a viable situation? Well, Michael Stevens spent way too much money conducting this experiment without actually hurting anybody, but it... I, yeah. Also, June 20th, 2003, Los Angeles. Yeah. And the answer to that question, whether it is moral to pull the lever, will be used to program self-driving cars. <coughs> the second trolley problem is even more challenging. There is only one set of tracks. Five people are still tied up on that second pair of tracks. But you are standing on a bridge overlooking the tracks. Standing next to you is a very overweight individual whom you can push onto the tracks, killing them, but they, they stop the train. Most of the people I asked were, albeit reluctantly, confident that they would pull the switch. But almost everyone was extremely certain that they would not push the individual off the bridge. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair. I agree. Pushing somebody to their death is a much more damning action than just pulling a lever, just pushing a button, just giving the command. No, their blood is on your hand in both situations. So why do we think that... Well... Other studies have found that the bridge situation engages the emotional parts of the brain, whereas the lever situation engages the logical parts of the brain. But that's... I'm not here to really talk about that. What if the only way to save the five people was to sacrifice yourself? In this situation, it doesn't matter the lever or the bridge because you're the one acting on yourself. Would you sacrifice yourself to save five? Why is that question so different from the first two? It's still just one life versus five. The inverse of that question, would you sacrifice a stranger to save your own? Now we're not talking about five versus one, one versus five. We're talking about one versus one. Would you sacrifice one person to save yourself? Or would you sacrifice yourself to save one person? And now for the fun part. Well, fun for me. Probably not very fun for you. But hey, you clicked the video and you're still here. The question at the heart of these increasingly intense situations is what is one life compared to another? The implication of that question is what gives a human life value? Does human life have intrinsic value? Are people valuable simply because they are people? Or must they act for the common good to be valuable? Oh geez, that's a that's an intense question right there. <clears throat> Now, now, now. So, so, let's, let's slow down here. Let me give a disclaimer. I am not justifying murdering people for some greater good. I am not saying that it is morally admissible to sacrifice people to serve some higher purpose, no matter how certain you are of that higher purpose. Most terrorist acts were carried out with the justification that it served a higher purpose. The purpose of this essay 
is to give a tangible context to the question, am I a good person? I plan on writing several future essays about good people throughout history and bad people throughout history and what mm, separates the good from the bad and what they sh have in common and other stuff that I'll get to in the future. <coughs> <coughs> also, let's say one of the potential victims is not a stranger. Let's say the person who may be sacrificed is a bad person. Let's say Hitler, who actually killed fewer than Stalin, and Mao Zedong, but we don't talk about that for... Nah. Osama Bin Laden, or my personal anti-favorite, Louis Garavito, a serial killer in Latin America until the year of my birth who is eligible for parole in 2023. He killed a lot of people and he might go on parole. What? Ugh. <clears throat> Would you sacrifice one of these people to save five? Would you sacrifice one of these people to save just one? Would you sacrifice one of these people to save yourself? Yeah, I would. Okay. 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 So, <clears throat> let's say the situation does not involve a bad person. Let's say the situation involves a stranger, or a group of strangers, and a good person. Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa... Jesus or Muhammad or Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, depending on your personal beliefs. Susan B. Anthony. What if they were the only person who needed to be saved? Would you sacrifice one stranger to save one of these good people? Would you sacrifice five strangers to save one of these good people? Would you sacrifice yourself to save one of these good people? As <coughs> I said before, the purpose of this video essay is not to give an argument to justify sacrificing people for a higher purpose. That is how terrorists think. The point of this essay is to ask, am I a good person? Am I worthy of being saved? I discovered an article that discusses a survey conducted in a series of countries and how different cultures put different levels of importance, different emphases on different personal traits like age, wealth, criminal backgrounds, money, or other social values. I've been recording this too long. I'm hungry and tired and my feet hurt and man, I just want to get to Mexico already.